And it's going to be a man of the West mirror unless somebody is going to dodge. Hey, Yoda, welcome, my dude. All right, so man of the West mirror, boys. Boys, we have the red man of the West player, Mustafa, against the green man of the West player, Ghost. It's a better man wins, you know what I'm saying? Du musst öfter Olifanten bauen, deine Euphorie beim Trampling ist legendary. <lacht> Schön, dass, du das, dass es dir gefallen hat, dude. Been few restrictions in Sweden overall. Are you from Sweden, Gabi? Dude, uh, you know what? What is the saying in Germany about Sweden? I mean, I don't know why they see that, but it's they are always saying Alte Schwede in Germany. I don't know why they are saying that. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Two farms coming up into the third farm. On the other side, we see farm, farm, barracks into the third farm. So, man of the West player, Mustafa. And nobody actually, nobody actually likes to play against Mustafa that much because Mustafa is able magically to drag the games extremely out. So, Mustafa has the ta talent, let's call it a talent, to make the games last a while. You know, when you play against Mustafa, finishing the game within like 10 to 15 minutes is nearly impossible. And the game might legit last an hour or two, you know, not even kidding. Which is good for from time to time to see a late game potential. So in this game, Man of the West Mirror match, I think we will, we will get the chance to see a lot of cavalry. Gondonites, Rohirrim eventually with Elma, I think they have a huge impact. And also Boromir can be quite impactful because there is not an easy way Man of the West can get fear resistant. You need to recruit Gandalf and get him to level 5 to unlock the fear resistance from the Man of the West faction. Double barracks coming up for Mustafa against one barrack so far. Soldier starts. I mean, you know, unfortunately, I, I always can disapp get disappointed from this fact, but Man of the West kinda got into a position of Goblins and Mordor in the version 8.5. Every time I see this faction, it's about spamming soldiers now. It was not like that before, trust me on that one. Germans tend to be pretty obsessed with Sweden. Swedish? Really? Dude, I, I can tell you, uh, Gabby, there was a Swedish girl, and hopefully my wife is not watching. I mean, she can't understand anyway, but when I was going to the, when I was studying in the university, there was a Swedish girl in my class. And holy quackamole, she was so gorgeous. I was, I was trying my best to hit her like a truck, but she wouldn't let me. She wouldn't let me, you know what I'm saying? She's like, you are a Turkish guy, you are gonna play with my feelings. I am looking for a serious relationship and all that stuff. And I'm like, I was like, I'm a Turkish guy, but I'm not that kind of a Turkish guy. I mean, I am, but she doesn't need to know. And she didn't trust me. I was like, trust me on that one. And she's like, no, 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 no. I was trying to go inside the jeans, trust me on that one, guys. But she was really hard to break through, you know what I'm saying? You needed Kron for that one. Two soldiers coming up. He's defending a lot. The stable is up on the field now for the Man of the West player Mustafa. And also for the Man of the West player Ghost. <laughs> Keep on trying. <laughs> Hit Femi is like a track real Turk. In a good way, in a good way, you know what I'm saying? In a satisfying way. Mustafa is camping a lot. He should be able to defend this no problem. But during all this time, there is zero pressure on Ghost. There are two farms, one from Ghost and one from uh, Mustafa. And Ghost is able to find us, right? He will be able to take down the farm. There is zero protection for this area. And now there is going to be a big commitment, right? So he has pikemen, many, many soldiers upon the field. And he might even empower that with the Gondor Knight and go for a massive push. So the question is, can Ghost defend this? That's the big question. He is preparing himself with one pikeman, one soldier and one Gondor Knight. All he got to do is kill this one pikeman and he should be in a good spot. And also, Rallying Call is going to be used from Ghost offensively. But again, there are no pikemen around this area. That means the Gondor Knight from Mustafa should be able to clean this up, no problemo. Now, beautiful trample is incoming, though. The pikemen were separating up from the other army. Wait, Rise of the Witch King is back. Good morning, Vivo. Good morning, my friends. Where have you been? Dude, we have done a full month of Champions League on this channel. Last month, February, full month, was exclusively Rise of the Witch King stream. <laughs> And now we have a $1,300 tournament. But are you an astronaut or something? Did you go to the moon? Beautiful trample is coming up. Beautiful. Nice one, nice one, nice one. 
But guys, no joke, the Swedish girl, and that's not even Kappa, by the way, she was really gorgeous. Blonde. She had like big abs, you know, like, you know, when, what is this called? When you, when you actually make an accident on the car, the things that blow up when you, to save you, to save your life. What is this called in English, guys? You know what I'm so talking about. When you, for example, crash against a tree and there is something blowing up in front of you, protect you. Airbag. She had gorgeous airbags too, dude. We were like 18, but holy moly, guys, she could be a model. Okay, so the Gundam Knights, I don't know what they are trying to do. Are they, are they gonna try to creep the trolley? That's not a good thing, my friends. Again, we will have a lot of Gundam Knights upon the field. The Rohan Spearmen are not the greatest Spearmen in the game. So eventually, at some point of the game, the Man of the West players, they need to make a transition into the Tower Guards. It might be a definitely possible option. Change stories about girls? Yeah, dude, I'm 31 years old now. All this left are stories. And I, have, I had like a really wild childhood, guys. When I was a teenager, like when I was from 15 until 25, those 10, 10 years period, before I actually got married when I was 28, I was a wild boy, you know what I'm saying? Champ Studios! <laughs> Thanks for five months. Appreciate that, it means a lot. Champ Studios just resubscribed for five months. Ahoy. Resubbing for the airbags. <laughs> Resubbing for the airbags. Dude. Oh, man. I didn't pass the class, by the way, because she was too disturbing. You know, I was disturbed all, always because I couldn't focus on the class. The Builder. Be careful. Tower Guards look so sexy. Yeah, true. In HD. Oh, the Builder. Hey, hey, hey. Mustafa, what are you doing? Okay, he's paying attention. Actually, Ghost is playing so much better than Mustafa in this game. He's pressuring a lot. 450 command points for both the players, though. The command points differential isn't there. But I, I still believe from what we have seen in this game so far, Ghost is just a little bit faster in terms of transitioning and in terms of pressuring. Using those Golden Knights quite nicely. It's always fun to watch people with micro. Because in Rise of the Witch King... Oh, be careful! What are you doing? Are you out of your mind? Are you going nuts? He actually were, he was able to save both the battalions, the one and two. So now he got to build a well. I think what the best thing that you can do is build two or even three wells at the same time. Because the recovery rate from a well of Gondor, of men, I mean, or dwarves, or even else, is so sloppy. So you need ages to recover, right? <laughs> Yeah, you see, that's... Yeah, you see? They are healing. But he's, like, very also upset about the recovery rate. Look how long they need to stay here to be able to replenish only one single unit. Like, look, look, just count. Like, 10 seconds for one single unit. And again, in a battalion, there are so many units that you need to stand here eventually for, like, a minute or two, which is a long time in RTS games. Claude, his wife, speaks perfectly English. Though it's, oh, luckily not. But she's intended, intending to learn it. She's learning German now, because my wife is from Turkey. She came to Germany after marrying me in 2018. Now she's there like for four years, and she's getting better in German language. And she said to me, hey, once I'm done learning German, I also want to learn English. I said, oh, God, oh boy. Oh boy. It's not a good thing. Oh, that's a huge pushing coming from Ghost. Rallying call in Lone Tower available. Or oh, I think when you summon Lone Tower right here. Or oh, that's a, that's not a good spot, I believe. But yeah, I think here it would be a better spot because you gotta make sure that this is not in the range of this fortress trebuchet. Oh, big commitment. What a burst! What a burst! What a burst! This is gonna be a huge push, by the way, from Ghost. He's gonna be able to take down the level two farm as well as well as the second barracks. That's gonna hurt Mustafa a lot. Holy moly, Podolski, you make me jump, bro. You made me literally jump out of my chair, brother. What the heck was that? Welcome to the stream, by the way. Arrow Volley was casted, but it missed actually. And look how much pressure this tower is creating. Mustafa is broke, right? He has no money. I mean, when he would have money, just build a trebuchet expansion and take down this tower. There is no, nothing that the Man of the West player goes can do about that. And 
even if he loses the tower, I think that's absolutely fine because he killed a level 2 farm in the barracks. He couldn't kill this because of the fire on the ground. Now, we have Eoma up on the field. He's only level 1. Level 2 is required for the spear throw. He's committing fully on the barracks as here uh, on the tower. He could go for the repair and repair it to mess up a little bit more. And Vivo, thanks for the primers for four months, my dude. Thank you so much. Why wo la vida just resubscribed for four months? Ahoy. Guess I have to catch up. Sad I missed so many ROTWK games. No problem, dude. Thanks for the resub though for four months with the primers. And you can also take a look into these games you missed in the past weeks in the second YouTube channel. So we have a second YouTube channel now since a couple of months. It's called BFME World. And every stream, every good game is being automatically uploaded from Balindru to the second channel. Okay, heal is available. Elma is good against enemy cavalry. The spear throw can be casted to splash a lot. Do it, do it. Boom! Nice one. Three of all of the, you know, three at the same time. Level three, level four is gonna unlock the money, money, money. The barracks is up on the field, but you need to get some spearmen. He has zero spearmen, zero spearmen, zero punishment. Beautiful trample is incoming. And Ghost is playing out of his mind this game against Mustafa. What a dominance performance in the game of the Man of the West Mirror match in the game number one. He's being everywhere, man. He's scouting at the bottom side, moving and creeping at the same time the, the lair at the top. And <laughs> thank you, Gabby. Appreciate that. Gabby 393 just gifted one subs. What a pirate. I will represent the men of Gone. Thank you so much for the gift. Guys, don't do that, please, by the way. Don't do that. Again, like I said, we have a charity stream coming up from tomorrow until the end of this tournament. And if you choose to support, it's better to support the people in need, the innocent people, the refugees from Ukraine. And I found a great tool, a great um, platform in which we could, you know, donate to the charity and they will make sure to reach out to the people in need. We have three wells coming up, boys. Look at this. Triple well. Oh, look at the blue animation on the ground. 1,000 command points for Ghost, by the way, against 500. The archer range is going down. Ghost is playing so good, by the way. That's, that, that, I mean, there has to be a specific reason why this guy is getting was getting expert status back in the day when the game was much more active. So, because one thing is for sure, Mustafa is not going to say a word and leave. That's going to be the first victory for Ghost. We have the green dwarven play at tops. What happened to my... What? Please? Okay. So, we have the red motor player Mustafa at the bottom side against the green dwarven player Ghost at the top side who was having a phenomenal game number one. A great start into the best of three series and he's only one win away from deciding the series for himself. Remember, the group stage is only best of three and the round of 16 right after the group stage is going to be best of five but in a double elimination tournament. So, basically, you will have a second life. You can still work your way up to the grand finals even if you have like a rough start into your first series in the round of 16. Two mineshafts into the Roll of Warriors, into the third mineshaft coming up for Dwarves. We have two slaughterhouses, Orc Pit, into the third slaughterhouse, coming up for the motor player Mustafa at the bottom. Eye of Sauron is scouting and seeing everything through walls and flesh, as Saruman would like to see. And Rallying Call is going to be chosen from Dwarves. Remember, in Rise of the Witch King, the patch 2.02, there is unrevealed random. That means there is no surprise effect in terms of the matchup at least. You will always be able to see the matchup from your open end, the faction. You have always the clear information, but sometimes it's still not a bad choice and bad call if you scout. Even though scouting is overrated in Rise of the Witch King compared to BFME 2, for example, but Mordor can still do that because Eye of Sauron is a great starting ability.
uh, he was able to force the dwarven play actually look at this orc spam dude what the heck like orcs 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 there is a sneaky mineshaft so once the dwarven player is able to defend himself he might actually go for a massive counter attack but for now he is forced to defend the mineshaft here is going to be taken down there are just too many orcs to deal with he's using now all his guardians to defend but Mordor has to scout, right? Mordor, does he have enough... In, in, no, he has no information about this area. He doesn't see that mineshaft. Creeping action is going on at the same time. The mineshaft here is going to be under attack. Might be taken down by the orcs. Lots of pressure. He was able to save this one. And also this one. But as, as you can see, both of these are badly damaged, right? That means the next attack might actually be able to take down both of them at the same time. This is going down for sure. And how many guardians does he have inside? Two guardians. So he might have three, four guardians in total, and he has a buff advantage. I is on cooldown, and he will have buffed four guardians. But you want to make sure to have also one pikeman at least. So if you go for an attack without a pikeman, this Haradrim Lancers might actually mess you up, right? And you need to <clears throat> make sure that you have at least, at bare minimum, one pikeman inside the genes. There comes the builder. The slaughterhouse is coming up. Does Mordor have enough? You know, he has zero information about this area yet. He doesn't know. He doesn't even see the builder. That's Fog of War for Mustafa. He's pushing all the time. We have now plenty of orcs leading forward. And these two mineshafts might be taken down. This mineshaft is going to go down as well. And there comes the commitment. We have actually four guardians and one pikeman. And rallying call. Trust me, this army is strong enough to even take down the fortress if they want to. But can you defend yourself in the meantime? And can you deal enough damage to turn the tide because we all know if dwarves are falling behind it's going to be an absolute nightmare to turn this game around Haradrim Palace is getting one-shotted the slaughterhouse is going down Mordor is having orcs everywhere like the mineshaft is going down this is going down as well dwarves are dropping down to 450 but Mordor is under attack luckily he has three orc pits in total and remember the orcs are the cheapest units in both terms money and also command points Beautiful trample with the Haradrim Lancers. But he has not the chance to recruit any more Haradrim Lancers anytime soon. Look at the minimap, dude. Look how many Oryx he has around this side. I think he, he has even the Horde bonus, right? When you gather them in numbers of 80 or more. Or 100, right? Let me check. Um, 100 or more, you will be able to deal 25% more damage. Which is a spell that always stacks. You can see them glowing like this. That means they have the Horde bonus. The Mindshot is going down. The age of the dwarves is over. The age of the orc has come. And <laughs> holy moly. I mean, he has four mineshaft around this side. But losing the Hall of Warriors would be one of the worst case scenarios here for dwarves. He's trying to defend himself. Quality goes over quantity in most cases. The builder is going to get in safety. But he's also pressuring at the same time. He actually was also able to deal a significant amount of damage. What are these orcs doing though? Okay. They were backed a little bit. They have also the level 2 Bloodthirsty, right? That also means 25% more damage. The Mineshaft is going down, but I think Dwarven player should be able to defend himself now. And in the meantime, Mordor lost officially all the Orc Pits. There are no more... There is no more Orc production anymore for the Mordor player. That's why you gotta scout. This Mineshaft behind the Fortress was such a pain for Mordor, you can't even imagine. Like, he was blindly sending all the units forward. Without, in, without checking anything, right? He didn't scout at all. When you scout a little bit, you could at least be able to find this mineshaft. But he was so confident that pushing, pushing, pushing is going to be the key to victory. But it clearly wasn't. And this might be the GG push because now Mordor is not going to be able to create any pressure anymore on the Dwarven player. That's going to buy go so much time to recover, to replace all the mineshafts he has lost in the past two minutes. We have 425 command points for Mordor, Warch and I, and 5 power points almost collected on top of that. We have 1 power point after rebuild, rallying call and heal, and 1 power point, 550 command points. So there is still the one sneaky mineshaft here around this side. Mordor has still no information. They are barely, I mean, can he actually see them? He might be able to see this dude here. They are barely out of vision, right? But we have Kofmok up on the field now, the beautiful Freddy Krueger guy. He looks like uh, the Nightmare of Elm Street. <laughs> Look, he has not even an arm, boys. He's handicapped like crazy. And pikes are dealing so much damage. Oh, that's gonna be bad. That's gonna be bad. They're hurting. They're hurting. They're bursting you down. 
Oh boy, oh boy. Dude, the amount of damage the pikes are dealing to heroes is something else. Let me tell you that much. They are bursting everything. The towers are coming up, but they should have been coming up now much, much sooner. That's going to be a big push once again from dwarves. Quality, ladies and gentlemen, goes over quantity. And you have seen that, right? How many orcs one single guardian can actually take down. Even though you will see at the end of the day, the amount of damage the dwarven player was able to kill in compared amount of the damage he lost. That's going to be insane differential. The orc pits, they are so extremely squishy. They have only 1500 health. They are with the goblin caves, the weakest production buildings in the game. It means they can be touched by the guardians and pikemen and they will be gone. And Mordor keeps doing the same mistake. Doesn't scout, doesn't respect the dwarven potential with the sneak attack from the mineshaft. And he's getting punished for it not only once, but twice in one single game. 375 for Mordor, 800 for Ghost. What a dominant performance. And that's, by the way, dude, you gotta understand it. Mustafa is a good player, guys. Okay? Mustafa knows what's up. He's always been consistently top 10 player in the past two years. But the performance that we are able to see from Ghost is so dominant, right? He's dominating the series, which is extremely impressive. And players like Mustafa, Ave Ave, Sauron, Smoky, they need to watch out for this guy, Ghost. He's coming for the number one spot in the spring tournament. And dude, I cannot tell you guys, the round of 16, the quarterfinals, the semifinals, the finals itself is going to be so entertaining. Trust me on that one, you don't want to miss those games. You don't want to miss those games. And we are advancing quite nicely in this tournament so far. We should be able, hopefully, to finish the group stage within the next one and a half to two weeks. Depends on the activity. Might be a week longer, might be a little bit less. We don't know. We will try our best to make it happen as soon as possible and then the real fun begins he was an expert for nothing yeah true he's playing really good the money is going to be secured by dwarves and look at the command points difference 525 versus 1000 also last game he was able to reach the command point cap extremely fast you can see the macro is very important while he's pressuring he's creeping while he's creeping he's expanding he's always making something he doesn't tunnel vision focus on one single activity he's multitasking out of his mind in this game number two it's a perfect proof the way you should be playing the rts games is not only focusing on one thing but focusing on 10 things and do them all at the same time in a decent level Another big push is incoming. This might be the one push to win this game and end this series against Mustafa and get one step, one important step closer to finish off the group stage B as the winner. Finishing as a winner is extremely important because if you finish in the number one spot, you gotta face somebody who was finishing his group in the number second spot, in the number two spot. You know, that makes your round of six in entrance a little bit easier, right? So that's why it's important to finish off as the number one player. Even though you can still advance if you reach the number two spot. Look at this minimap, guys. Do you see this minimap, guys? Do you see this? <laughs> Holy moly, do you see this? Look, mind job, mind job, everywhere. This guy actually spread it out more than the coronavirus, guys. This guy is the real virus of the game. Tell, let me tell you that much. What is this? From China down to Europe, down to Asia, down to US. This guy is spreading out extremely fast. Huge, huge. <laughs> there was a weird and cringe example, sorry for that, but it's like a current example. You know, in 2022, you always talk about that stuff. Big pushes incoming. A rallying call is available. Dwarven Riches has been used on this mineshaft. He's getting rich, like rich, you rich. 1,000 command points. He might go for the Vort Works. He might go for the heroes like Gloin, Gimli. He has so many different possibilities. Kofmok is back on the menu, boys. He's level 3. Black Oryx, a little bit too late for them. They are great, don't get me wrong. They are very strong. They cost also a little bit more. They got nerfed this patch. But they are extremely reliable. Especially when they get level 2. I think they can almost 1v1 the Guardians. That's how strong they are. But, I mean, Mustafa was doing good. Don't get me wrong. The three Orc Pits was creating a lot of pressure on Ghost. And I think the major mistake from Mustafa was to ignore the fact 
that Ghost might go for a sneaky attack. If this attack, the initial attack number one, wouldn't have happened, Mustafa would be in a much better spot. But we are not here to talk about ifs and whens, because the fact is, Ghost is going for the W. He's going for the win. Holy moly, guys. Big push. The mindshot is going down. That's a big army from dwarves. He's surrounded by the black oryx and they have also Eye of Sauron. Does he have Warchan too? Yes, sir. They have double buff, but I think they are still getting outclassed here. The orcs, when they get level 2, they will have in total, by the way, 50 from this, 33 from this, and 25 from the bloodthirsty. It means they have round about 100% more DPS as we are talking, but they are alone. What can men do? What can black orcs do against such a reckless, reckless, reckless? Boom! Nice micro, by the way. He pressed X on his keyboard to spread them out just in the last possible seconds. Otherwise, this arrow wave was about to mess him up. Black Oryx are doing a phenomenal job. I has to be moved on them. They are taking care of the Spike Man and also stalling the game out a little bit. Dude, he's surprisingly still in the game. King Brand is on the field, level almost 2. That's gonna unlock the slap shot. 525, but he has barely any units on the field. Only one Orc Pit level 2, the other two are level 1. Haradrim Palace is only level 1 too. No Haradrim lands anytime soon. I mean, the thing is that even if he wins those skirmishes from time to time, there is a huge differential. The, um, you know, the only way you can win this is by maintaining your victories in those small skirmishes. Then you need to push multiple times. You need to push from this, from this, from this area. Because look at this, we have four mineshafts only in this area. We have three mineshafts around this area. We have like five mineshafts around this area. So the amount of pressure he has on the map is insane. The only way you can play this, you gotta play around your own area. It means you cannot leave this settlement here. You are in a prison. You need to rotate from one location to the other location. That's the snowballing effect of Dwarven Faction. If you get a lead like that, I think Dwarven Faction is the best faction to play. Because you can teleport, right? You can beam from one location to the other location in one single second. Siege Hammer is not purchased. Banner not purchased. He might go for a, a Dwarven Zealots if he wants to. Does he have money for that? Uh, no, he has no money for that yet. We have King Brand level 2, almost level 3. Guardians, up the ready. Guardians at the ready. Also, Hobbits potentially can be recruited. He has both the Inns under his control. And there comes the Forge Works. Finally, 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 finally. He needed that. You need the Mithril Meal. If you get fifth Mithril Meal, you can dominate this fight. It's not even going to be close. I will lead the dwarves into battle. I will lead the dwarves into battle. That's Klein, the daddy of Gimli San. Look at him, boys, with his big hammer. It looks like Mjolnir, you know, like the, the, the hammer of Thor. Okay, um, level 3 slaughterhouse, it's the gem inside the, inside the, around his own fortress. It's the most important and most valuable building for Mustafa. Uh, you know, I would like to say he needs to keep it alive, but it's easier said than done. There comes the offensive fort Warix. that's what you gotta do to just demolish, I mean, recruit a demolisher and go for the double, you go for the victory. I think that's gonna be the one push. Yes, leadership though. I mean, dwarves have no leadership as we are talking, but that's about to be changed with the battle wagon action. Oh oh, King Brand, Glyn, Rallying Cold, Arrow Volley is on cooldown for Mordor. He has Warchan and I. Gimli is also on the field, by the way. I didn't even see that. Daddy and Sun side by side. Tainted Line, Skull Shot. No fear resistance for the dwarven army. They are getting messed up. Big Fiesta fight is happening. Slam shot can be used. Gimli, we gotta keep an eye on Gimli. Nick Pro 7, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Gimli level 2 will jump down those armies, those units. There comes the slap shot or slam from Gloin. Gimli is looking to get the level. The slaughterhouse level 2 has been bursted. Heal is coming in clutch. Gothmok is diving into the backline, killing Brand, by the way, off screen. Gimli is level 2. Are we gonna see a leap? Are we gonna see a leap? Yes! On your face, son! Boom! The archers behind the line are. Ob God, what a fiesta. <laughs> Dude, Gothmog can't do anything at this point. He has Fury on cooldown. Gimli is gonna be a one-man army once he's level 5. But I think that's not even required. At the very same time, all he gotta do is recruit a demolisher. And that's the plan, ladies and gentlemen. Go for the W now. The Mordor army has been crushed and fallen to pieces. That is one sneaky slaughterhouse. I like this a lot from Mordor. But 
that's not gonna change too much about this game he's holding with the black orcs black orcs are actually doing a phenomenal job there comes the man of deal special summon he's memeing with him using dwarven riches on the offensive mineshaft what a memer what a memer what a memer <laughs> what the heck was that all right there comes the man of the they have fire arrows purchase so they are much much greater in my opinion than the ranger summon from the man of the west faction because ranger have no fire right with the fire you also deal a lot of damage to buildings and structures and the fortress is falling into pieces dwarven heroes all of them we have only king brand has been taken down we have the dwarven heroes Dean, Glyne, and Gimli side by side. Level 5 is unlocked for Glyne. Mustafa is falling apart. And that's gonna be, ladies and gentlemen, a 2-0 clean victory for Goose from United Kingdom. And he is moving one step closer.